Forbidden Lands The Role-Playing Game The Basics, Part 1 Forbidden Lands is a tabletop role-playing game, based on a fantasy background using stereotypical types of characters that might have come from a book published in the mid-50s. You play a character looking for adventure, treasure, power and experience. The game itself is broken into two books, the Player's Handbook and the GM's Guide. Characters Characters in the game are based on canon professions. You pick the combination you wish to play and create the character around that. In terms of kin, you have the standard fantasy game races, elves, dwarfs, humans and halflings along with some other less well-known races. Each has a small advantage and disadvantage, but the main difference is in their cultural background. Professions again are nothing groundbreaking if you have played other well-known fantasy games before. You have fighters, hunters, sorcerers, and rogues. Some of them less well-known like the peddler and the rider. What is missing is a cleric. That role might come under the druid, but no guarantees about that. Characters have attributes, stats if you will. They are strength, agility, wits, and empathy. Strength is raw power, help you lift things, smash things, hurt things and resist being hurt. Agility is speed, body control, and the ability to shoot things. Wits is sanity, perception and intelligence. Empathy is charisma, and the ability to manipulate others. Attributes have a direct effect on the way skills work in the game. All skills have an attribute aligned to them, so even if you do not have the skill you have a chance because of your attributes. Attributes range from 2 to 6 points, depending on kin and profession. Along with attributes and skills, you have talents that give you small advantages in the game, pride which is used as a get-out-of-jail-free card with GM, and a dark secret. The Rules Dice Dice play an important part in the game. The dice are usually all standard six-sided dice, however, there might be an occasion for others. Three categories of dice are used, they are base dice, skill dice, and gear dice. Essentially you are looking to roll a six, and this is seen as one success. The more successes you roll the better. Base dice fail with a roll of a one as do gear dice. When you roll anything you are rolling base dice, the number depending on attributes, you add skill dice if you have a score and a skill and gear dice if you are using a piece of equipment. On the first roll, any ones that you roll do not count, you only count the sixes as a success. However, if you elect two, you can push a roll. Pushing a roll holds the ones and the sixes you rolled before. You re-roll the other dice and take the final result overall, that means with the held ones and sixes calculated in. So Ronnie Hot Dogs a fighter, rolls to hit something. Ronnie rolls three base dice, three skill dice and one gear dice. In the example, base dice are white, skill is red and gear are black. Ronnie rolls all the dice and the base dice roll one six, which is represented by crossed swords, and a one, which is represented by a skull. Ronnie decides to push the roll, so the skull and the swords are held and the rest of the dice rolled. The result is that Ronnie gets an extra success but at the cost of the one that was held. So that now means the result is two successes and one fail. The fail counts as the roll was pushed. Fail on a base dice could denote a drop in an attribute due to exhaustion for example, and fail on a gear dice could mean a broken item. Fail on a base dice after a pushed roll however, gets you a willpower point for each roll. Willpower points fuel talents and spells so the risk is part of the game. The Rules Combat and Actions Initiative is determined by drawing from a deck of 10 cards. Number 1 acts first through to 10. Some talents can affect initiative. The turn then takes place. In a turn, you can perform a quick and a slow action, or two quick actions. Slow actions will be things like slash with a weapon, or punch, taunt or cast a spell. A fast action will be dodge, parry, aim or run for example. Range is not determined specifically in feet and inches. It is classed on zones, so if you are in a room that might be one zone, a corridor another. Maps will dictate a zone, but the GM might just not bother with maps and tokens and just state you are in one zone and someone else in the party is not. Moving zones takes actions. When combat is taking place it is essentially attack, parry and then resolve effects. 
Gear-like armor can absorb damage but might also get broken, as will parrying weapons. Damage is taken from the strength characteristic in physical combat. When that reaches zero the character is broken and needs help or could in some circumstances die. Some beasts and spells damage other stats as well. Magic Yes, there is magic in the game but it is rare and needs willpower to usually power it. Spells like talents are broken into ranks and the spell user usually has access to all of those in a rank, however, having enough power to use them is another story. Beasts Lots of fantasy beasts exist. They are a constant threat however in combat they all have their own unique abilities which translate into combat being very different for each. Essentially you fight beasts differently from other characters. Some beasts are so powerful they can kill a character in one blow. The Journey and Stronghold One of the core elements of the game is the journey the characters take. They will map a route to discover the world around them. That journey is detailed, with attention to travel, weather, food, water and of course encounters and discoveries. Each day is broken into four phases and the players explain what happens in those phases. It might be rest, foraging, travel, sleep for example. The GM has an abundance of tables and charts to state the outcome of this, which means the game will be always different for different sets of players. No one campaign of Forbidden Worlds will be like another, by design. The stronghold is important as well. Gaining power and wealth is tough. Characters need a base to relax and recuperate, and also grow their reputations. In the game, the characters will keep a stronghold. A place they build and grow. As it gets bigger it's more expensive, with more people and wealth and of course that becomes interesting to others looking for wealth and fame. In summary. Forbidden Lands is old new school fantasy role-playing. If you like the fantasy role-playing games of the 80s and want a simpler more focused but stereotypical game, compared to the complex all-encompassing creations of today it's well worth the money.